Oh, fall is a fun time on the farm, folks. I'm um, coming at you here from the farm, and today we're processing fruit. Um, there's all sorts of different fruit. Here we have the uh, mango melons. These are a shorter growing melon that you can um, grow up in the north area here. It's kind of like a cantaloupe. That would be the best way I could describe it. Um, I think it's very sweet. Um, it's not uh, green like a honeydew. But again, it has a shorter growing season, and for those of us up in the North Country, it's one of the fruits we can easily grow. Granted, we have, you know, June berries and raspberries and apples and cherries and stuff like that too up here. But this is kind of a fun fruit for us to have. Basically, what I do is I take it in the house, and it's very soft skin, so be gentle with it, and I just peel it off when it's ripe. And I know when these are ripe, because you'll get one or two on the plant to split, and I pretty much just have to pick everything and go with it. Now, these are great for dinners and meals and lunches, but I also like to keep it long term. And that's kind of the purpose of today's video. I kind of want to show you how we keep our melons long term. There's different ways of doing it, folks. Certainly, you know, you can you can can this, but it gets a little mushy in the canning process. You can dehydrate these, but I finally just, they have a kind of texture and rubberiness that's just, not the easiest. It just doesn't, it, you don't know, dehydrated cantaloupe, dehydrated honeydew, dehydrated mango melon like this. They just, I don't know. They don't seem to do it for me. So um, the best thing we've found to do with it, uh, other than just freezing it, which you can do, you can just freeze these, is um, probably to make jams. But the second best thing we like to do with these is freeze dry them and kind of make them into, how would I say this? either like a fruit salad later on or just a light snack for when you're out in a go maybe you want it in your lunch or something so in the freeze-dried form you can just grab them and eat them or you can rehydrate them and put them back into like a fruit salad with like you know cherry juice or something like that when you're making the fruit salad so here what I'm doing is I'm just peeling the outsides of these and getting them to look nice and stuff I've got numerous of them I think there's six or seven of them here that came in today so um, it's really easy to do. Uh, once I get them all cleaned up and looking nice, it's just a matter of me starting to slice them. Um, you can slice these things different ways. I kind of like to do rings and then cut them in half. And I'd like to make them, oh, I'd say maybe about a half inch thick so that there's some substance to them um, if you wanted to pull them out of the, the freeze-dried bag or jar later on and just eat them by finger. Again, you can you can dice these all up if you want them just to use it for um, rehydration and putting into fruit salads too. There's there's no magic method to which way works better for you. This is just what I like. I like to just kind of slice it up kind of thin. And then what I kind of do is I, I, I stand it up on its edge. And then I, I kind of quarter them or cut them in half depending on how I'm feeling. And then I put them on the freeze dryer trays. And I know eventually we're going to freeze dry them. Now... If you freeze these in the trays before you freeze dry them, I've been able to get these done in like a little over a day. And I don't even mean 24 hours. I mean like 12 to 16 hours. But for sake of argument today, I'm just going to plop them in the freeze dryer and let the freeze dryer freeze them. And they are delicious right now. I mean, this is, you know, when they're fresh, this is when it's really fun to eat them too. So we'll cut a couple of these up for lunch and, you know, we'll we'll enjoy them with our meal here today, too. No sugar, no nothing on them, just just plain Jane down on the trays and off we go, folks. It's not the it's not the hardest thing to do here. Um, it just takes a little time to, to peel them off, dump the seeds out and put them on the trays. So I'm not going to bore you with too much footage of that. And obviously then we're going off to the freeze dryer. You know, got to shut the valve in the back of the freeze dryer, kind of get it set up so everything's the way we want it. And then it's a matter of just putting the trays in. Remember, I like to change my oil after every time I use my freeze dryer. Um, it just does better that way. I'm still using a oiled vacuum pump, even though I have a different one if I need it as backup. But the way to keep those things good is to keep the water out of them and change that oil, get them run through that uh, filter system. That's what I find is the best. So here I am. I'm just kind of getting the door cover on um, and getting it all set up and we'll get this sucker kicked on and then we'll come back and uh, we'll get it we'll get it all freeze-dried done and and packed away so you can see it 
So now we're at the end of the cycle. Things look good here. We're going to take them out. Now when we take them out, you can see they look kind of the same. They just lost a little bit of color to them. Um, but boy, they are just light and fluffy. They snap. They're crispy. Um, and we just put them in mason jars. Now, you can mylar bag these. You can even vacuum seal them if you do a gentle cycle, just so you don't you know, crush the crap out of them. Um, if you put these in the jars and you put an oxygen, oxygen absorber in there and put the lids on tight, um, the oxygen will get sucked up by the absorber and it'll somewhat depress the seal on its own. And that's certainly one way to do this, okay? But um, in this situation, I'm going to take one of my wife's newer toys and I'm going to play with it um, and we're going to see if we can um, seal them down without the expense of the oxygen absorber. Sometimes the oxygen absorber just kind of makes, you know, um, uh, how do I want to say it, more cost to the whole process. And I'm just going to try this year to do it a little differently. I'm going to fill these jars like she's doing here. And then what I'm going to do is um, we're going to take one of these, you know, $15 Amazon pumps and we're going to just clean the surface of the lid. Um, we're going to put the ring on it, the, the canning ring on it. We're going to press that um, device down on it. There's one for wide mouths and one for narrow. And then this one comes with a little pump and we bought this thing off of Amazon. It actually works pretty decent. Stick it on top and you just pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it. The little faster you go, the better it works. And you just go till it starts getting really taut. And what it's doing is it's sucking the air out and depressing that lid for you. I know it's kind of a cheater method, but it certainly works. Now you could certainly hook this up to your um, vacuum sealer and use that as a pump too. But I don't find this to be too tough. You only got a couple jars to do. Quick pump it down and you're good to go. So that's what my daughter here is doing. She's just, you know, pumping it and starting to give her a little bit of resistance there. And then once it's down enough that she's got enough resistance, she's just going to break it free and she's going to take the lid off and it's going to be nice and sealed. And then, you know, if you want a ring on it, put a ring on it for double safety. Um, in our case, you know, we do, but some people don't. And then this keeps some of the air out of it. And you can throw this on the shelf uh, right on it with a Sharpie and it'll be good for years. So that's kind of how this works, folks. There you have it. We've taken mango melons. We've cut them up. We've freeze dried them. We've jarred them. And they're all set for a couple years of storage. Thanks for watching, folks. Please like and subscribe and support our channel because we do need you. Thanks. Bye.